Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I'm here with Datus Courier. You're an amazing actor. Today he's going to be modeling. You're also a father. Yes. You're just down from New York visiting here in Charleston, South Carolina. And so today we're going to do kind of an athletic shoot. It's kind of a basketball theme thing. Just playing around with hard light while also manipulating our white balance and using some gels so that we can create some really interesting looking images directly in camera. This video is sponsored by Profoto, but also Photo Plus. Photo Plus is one of my all-time favorite photo conventions in the United States. It's usually held in the Javits Center in New York City, but in order to keep everyone as safe as possible, this year's event will be a little different. This year's PPE will take place entirely online with their new Digital 360 experience. Now, everyone can register for free right now, but starting November 1st through November 30th, everyone will get access to their brand new educational platform, PPE Plus. No matter if you're looking for information on the latest camera gear or technology, or if you want to invest in your own photography education by learning from some of the most acclaimed photographers in the industry, PPE Plus is going to be something you definitely want to check out. From live virtual photography shoots to interactive career building discussion panels, PPE Plus has a lot of business and creative information regardless of your current level in the industry. So regardless if you've just picked up a camera or if you're a seasoned professional, head to the link in the description below and you can sign up for this free trial November 1st through the 30th and you can join one of the best photo communities in North America. So the goal for today's shoot is to take something that almost looks like nighttime. It's actually about four or five o'clock in the afternoon. It's very overcast, but I think with just changing our white balance and using a simple gel, we can make this scene look completely different. So for today's shoot, we're gonna be using Profoto lights. Now, my whole studio is full of Profoto. I absolutely love their stuff, but don't worry, no matter what lights you own, you can apply these same techniques. I'm gonna be using the Profoto B10 Plus, which is extremely powerful. It's gonna help me overpower the sun, even though the sun's not completely out right now, it's gonna be really useful out on location. We're also gonna be using some reflector dishes, maybe even an umbrella to do a little bit of fill. And of course, we're also gonna be using their new OCF gel system, which is going to allow us to change the color of our light so that we can get that dramatic color contrast. So let me talk about the camera setup that I have here. Now keep in mind, everything I'm using today is in the description below. It's also in the top pin comment. I'm gonna be shooting on my Nikon D850. This is an old DSLR, but I still enjoy this camera quite a bit. I'm also shooting with the Tamron 24 to 70. And we're here in this really kind of urban area right off the side of the freeway here. And what I love about this, this is actually an access bridge that lets you cross uh, the interstate here. And it has this really interesting geometric shape to where you can get some really cool leading lines. And the goal here is just to use some of these leading lines to make a really strong, impactful image. I think that's really gonna bring this all together. And then when we add the lighting to it, it's gonna make it really over the top. So first thing, let me just show you what a natural light shot would look like if I use no strobes and I have everything set to something you might do typically. I have my white balance set to 5,000, which is gonna be for daylight. I'm gonna be shooting at 2.8 wide open so I can blur the background quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna set my shutter to get a correct exposure. So Datus, let me just get you to just, yeah, put the ball in the middle there. Let me just take a test shot here. This is all gonna be natural light. And as you can see from this image, I'm dealing with a major problem. I can get the sky to look pretty good, but then Datus goes completely dark. If I open up my shutter a little bit to expose for him, I'm gonna be left with an image that looks really good for his skin tones, but now my background is really bright. It definitely doesn't look like nighttime at all. So in order to balance this photo out, this is where strobes really come in handy. So for our first light, we just have this raised, you know, maybe eight feet up. I have a reflector dish on here that's gonna give a lot harder looking light. It's also gonna contain the light so that it's just hitting datas from the front and not spilling all over the place. Let me do a test shot here. And as you can see, we now have a perfectly balanced image, but I wanna make this a lot more moody. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna increase my shutter to about a thousandth of a second. And if you've ever worked with strobes before, you now know that I'm beyond my sync speed. What's great with the Pro Photo lights is I can now go past one two fiftieth of a second, and I'm still gonna be able to shoot wide open at 2.8 and get that blurry background while still being able to underexpose my background by actually going past the sync speed. So with my ISO set all the way to the lowest setting, I'm shooting at 2.8 and a shutter of one one thousandth of a second. I'm gonna have to turn my strobe all the way up so that I have enough light to overcome that fast shutter. We're now in like hyper sync. And let's do another shot. And as you can see, we now have a really dark sky. It almost looks like nighttime. It almost looks like there's a faint sunset back there, but we have perfect light on our subject now. 
So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make my background really cool while keeping the colors on my subject a little more normal. And if you've watched our channel recently, I like to do this by taking our white balance down from 5,000 down to 2,500. And then I'm gonna put a couple CTO gels on my flash, which is going to make the light that should be blue a lot warmer. Let's do a test shot here and you'll be able to see just how big of an effect this makes. And if you look at this image, it now looks like he's being lit by kind of a tungsten light that might be out on location while the sky is dark blue. It's a lot more detailed than you would get if we actually came out here at night where my sky would be pitch black. I think this gives the perfect appearance of being in the late afternoon, early evening without actually having to shoot at that time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work on a bunch of different poses, come up with a bunch of different concepts. We're gonna change the ball position. We're gonna do some images that look really intimidating and then maybe some where he's looking off camera. Once you have your lighting dialed in, it's really important just to shoot a lot because the last thing you want is to get all the way back to your computer and realize you had the perfect setup and you didn't quite get the perfect image. So let's shoot for the next five minutes and create some cool images. All right, so I think we got some great images. I wanna do a lighting setup that's a little bit more dramatic, maybe kind of like a hero shot. I'm kind of thinking of like those Sports Illustrated covers or featured images where you see it, it's just iconic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this light over to the side. And Datus, I'm gonna have you kind of have your face towards the light. And then I think by this, I'm gonna have kind of a rim light. He's gonna be like sideways looking one way. It's gonna not be so much about him staring down the camera. It's gonna have more kind of an editorial hero shot feel. And then maybe I can even shoot low up towards these fences to also give it a really graphic element. Now also keep in mind, whenever you have your light really hard off to the side, you, you wanna pay attention to where all the shadows and highlights are going. So sometimes I might need to move my light just a few inches further so that I get the nice light falling off on the cheeks. If I'm getting too much light on the face and it's not quite as dramatic, I can push it a little bit further and really edge it out. But I do want some definition in his skin and his eyes. I don't want it to be a mystery basketball player. I want you to know exactly who this is. So when I'm shooting on location, I absolutely love using one light. I don't think you need a whole lot more than that. But when you're doing these really dark day to night type of shots, Sometimes it can help to fill in just a little bit of the shadows. And so I'm gonna add a second light. I'm gonna use an umbrella. This way I don't have to pop up a huge softbox. And I think if we just place it right here, I can add a little bit of highlight on the ball. I can fill in some of his skin, show off some of the clothing. And it's not really going to look like a strobe light necessarily, but it just looks like a little bit more ambient fill. Now when you're positioning your fill light, there's a couple different things you can do. A lot of people might put the fill light on the same side as the strobe. Others may put it on the opposite side to kind of feel from another direction. I don't want this light to really call a lot of attention to itself, so I'm actually gonna put it dead on right behind the camera, and this soft light is just gonna spill onto my frame, and it's not gonna look like a light that's up in the sky or being cast from a different direction. And one last thing to note with this fill light is I also haven't gelled this, and so my fill is going really blue, which is the same color as the ambient light, and it's just allowing a lot of color contrast between my key light, which is a little bit warmer, the ambient light and the fill, which are all cool. So there you guys go, two different lighting setups, one hard light from above, and then we've changed that hard light off to the side and then added a little bit of fill. And we've made a scene that really is daylight look like night. The key to this was going into high speed sync mode so that we could kill our ambient light while still shooting at 2.8. And then also using some CTO gels to change the color of our light so that we get some natural light on our subject while still having a nice blue background. Over the years, I've really found that using this color contrast technique is something I love. And really the only thing that you need to complete this is just a set of gels. Put that in your pocket. You can pull it out anytime and get a completely different looking photograph. If you guys enjoy content like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Also head over to fstoppers.com where we have free daily content. And if you want to learn from some of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full length tutorials.